For the people of the Karja, no element of their lives is as constant or important as their faith, the sun faith to be specific, and from this importance derives the high standing of those who serve the sun and its radiant line, the sun priests. In the hierarchy of Karja society, only the sun king himself is held in higher standing than these men of the cloth. It's the belief, according to the sun faith, that it is due to the tribe's devotion to the sun that they have reached heights far above their contemporaries. In this they feel that the Karja are indeed the sun's glory reflected, and the priests are glimmers of its great and all-encompassing light. These men are servants and students of its light, observing and studying the sun and stars, as well as interpret omens and seek to explain great events by the sun's teachings, such as the great shadow cast from the mountain that fell. Their ornate and vibrant robes dyed in cinnabar are constant symbols of their status, each passed down from their forebears. Their status, in fact, goes far beyond the realm of the spiritual, but also holds sway in matters of a more tangible nature. Historically, much of Karja power has revolved around a thriving economy based on trade. In fact, it was the Karja whose written glyph language that allowed a way to quantify trade beyond a simple barter system. At the heart of this economy are the Sun Priests, as they act as treasurers for the wealth of the Sundom. To enforce this power, they also assume the role of magistrates, settling disputes among those of lesser stature than themselves. With control over both spiritual and fiscal wealth, outside of his radiance himself, these men are truly above all others under the rule of the Sundom. Though their faith dictates they shall speak only truth and strike only for righteous means, in recent times plagued by shadow, rigid tradition has inhibited doing what is truly just. During the Red Raids, the strict doctrine of faith overshadowed the moral codes of many. By their most sacred laws, the Sun Priests were bound to abide by the atrocities perpetuated by the 13th Sun King Jaron, for to oppose his word would be to oppose the will of the Sun itself blasphemy to say the least. In this time of madness, those few priests who did speak out paid with their lives. Even in the face of such brutality, scripture was clear as to the role of the Speaker of the Sun, and so many hardline priests were compelled to leave the liberated capital loyal to Jaron's chosen heir, Itamen. For they feel it's not their place to question the Sun's will, nor its chosen, only to abide by it. The staunch traditionalists who remain in the City of the Sun have found themselves at odds with the progressive changes made by the newest in the Radiant Line, Avad. They see the inclusion of outlanders into their society as an unwelcome impurity on their culture. Some even feel Avad is a false king and has plunged the tribe into a time of twilight and darkness. However, in Meridian, this is only a vocal minority, for those who remain represent a younger and more open-minded order than those who came before. Those like Mournful Naman believe that the sun's light brightens all lands and all peoples, and believe that the sky is wide enough for the faiths of all tribes, a far cry from the exclusivity and elitism usually associated with the tribe. Though these priests still hold true that the sun itself is pure and without flaw, they have come to accept that its vessel, such as Juran, can be flawed. For the sun's omnipotent glory is a weight that may prove too heavy for lesser men. Though the direction of the Sun Faith and his practitioners is yet to be truly set, with the imminent fall of the Shadow Karja and Avad's mandate for inclusion, his words may yet set the stage for a warmer future than the scorched past of his father. And that brings this chronicle to a close. If you'd like to see more content like this, likes and shares are always appreciated. And if you really like what we're doing at the channel, come join our community and hit that subscribe button. Also consider supporting the channel on Patreon to help us create new series and to supply more quality content just like this. Check out the link in the description. The topic for today's video came from one of you, our awesome subscribers. So if you have a great idea or interesting question that could lead to our next episode, let us know in the comments down below. And until next time, thanks for watching and keep questing.